this was about the only thing I knew about basketball, that this is a basketball. Well, I know a little bit more now, and I can dribble, and I can free throw, and I can, and I'm learning, and it's getting better and better. The organization was begun on, on my part because of what I had done with the men in Senior Olympics. We practiced at the Mission Valley YMCA on Friars Road every Tuesday and Thursday. But there was a missing element, and that was the women's program. And after this fantastic article, can I hold it up? This fantastic article, we had people coming out of the woodwork to play basketball. There they all were. There must have been 50 women gathered in a room to start learning basketball. The organization and the toughness and the efficiency with which they worked, these were wonderful career women. And it was very impressive to see them put the whole organization together. What Audrey started, she made it a formal organization with putting the bylaws together, a directory, and that. And I just developed what she started and continued on. And now we're up to over 100 members. It, it is not a sport for wimps, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I think it's the one time that we don't uh, care as much about how we look as long as we win. <laughs> well, I used to play professional basketball for 14 years. And when I retired, I went through kind of like a dangly loss. What am I going to do now that basketball's over? I didn't know what to do. Um, my mom told me that she had heard that there were some women playing at the local YMCA. So I thought, well, okay, well, I better get down there and check it out. I thought it was just going to be a bunch of old ladies playing. Well, when I arrived in the gym, I saw elbows flying, sweat, laughter, joy, people going for rebound, and all of these women were over 50. And I was just in my 40s, and I just got goosebumps. I could not stop thinking, oh my gosh, there's life after basketball, <laughs> and that, that uh, there's lots of other women playing. So uh, they asked me to coach them because I was too young to join the league, so I started coaching them, and I coached the Splash, which is now the legendary Splash team, and I was just forever grateful for that. What I like about the whole league and the older ladies is there's a camaraderie. It's just not basketball. I mean, these are, this is their circle of friends. I mean, this is their life. A lot of them, their husbands have passed away. And you just see how much they care about each other. They go out to lunch. So it's a whole camaraderie thing. It's just not about basketball. The last time that I experienced support and love was when my mother died. I always said I wouldn't uh, be upset, but I was. And they, um, oh, they were just wonderful. They came and supported me emotionally, and um, a bunch of them came to my mother's funeral. When I was a physician, I noticed that you would get a patient who was 60, and sometimes the patient was an old person who was 60, and sometimes it was a young person who was 60. And I think the women who are playing basketball are a group of young women who are their age. 
they think of themselves in much younger terms. They don't think I'm old, they think I'm older. <laughs> These are the medals that I brought back after nationals at uh, Stanford at Palo Alto last August. This one represents gold for basketball. And then the next one is gold for one of my track events. I think that was the high jump. No, that was the long jump. This one was for the triple jump. This one was for the 200. And this one I got beat out of for the gold. I got a silver for the 100. So those are all from our national games. And then we just had our state games for track and field this past weekend. And I came back with three goals for that one for my long jump, triple jump, high jump and two silvers for my 100 and my 200. And now I'm weighted down and I couldn't run or play basketball if I wanted to, <laughs> but I've got them. That's great. That's great. <laughs> the issue of competitiveness is very interesting to me anyway, because when I look around and I see how competitive the other women are, I say to myself, where were these women when I was in high school? There were very few competitive women. They, the biggest thing you did was go out for a cheerleader. So the people that are in the age group right behind me, 50 to 55, are now girls that had scholarships, that played all the way from junior high to high school. They played in college. So the level of competition is so different. The splash team, who is uh, now all over 80, 80 or more, because all of our senior games, whether it's basketball or track or whatever it is, go by five-year increments. So you're not really competing with those much, much younger than you are, or much older in some cases. <laughs> but it works out that you have that uh, kind of leveling of the competition. And our splash team does not have anyone in our age group to compete against until we go to nationals. There were three teams at nationals that were over 80 plus, so we did have some other competition, but we're always playing the younger teams in our own league here in San Diego. But they're nice to us most of the time, and uh, it gives us some exercise and some fun, even though we don't often win when we're playing the younger teams, of course. Uh, yes, there are particular things that, we, that I'm doing in order to keep my body strong in regards to my diet, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I started Weight Watchers because I know that I need to lose weight and I know that if I were to lose weight, I'd be a little faster on the court and that's another motivation for me. So absolutely, I'm working on that personally. Um, but I also lift weights. I have weights at home that I do and while I'm watching TV, I'm just like lifting my weights. You know, just what My daughter says that she wants to become like me, that she wants to be able to continue her sports the way I am at my age. And um, I have a grandson, he thinks it's wonderful. He comes to my basketball game, our uh, practices, and these people have seen him there, and he, he, so funny, he tells me what I need to do, how to die for the ball, he's, he's four years old. They teach safety and exercise and movement with the balls to prevent, help prevent injuries. So um, I think uh, we're not going in there just cold, everything is learned. And, uh, and we're supported by these ladies who are watching us. Hey, don't do it this way. It's better to move this way. Careful here. Um, warm up. They take good care of us. And when those girls come in, they're not just playing basketball. They're opening up a whole new world of sociability, acceptability, and they're going to learn basketball. And I think that is called the rookies. And I just feel that that's the greatest accomplishment that I feel that I've done with SWBA. Women have a place to go from the bench to the basket. Now, being a rookie, this is funny, but I had the opportunity to go see the LA Sparks and the Chinese, who are professional uh, basketball players, and they played at Vieja Stadium. Well, the old rookie got to go and play at halftime with some of the other seniors. And it was wonderful because you had an audience on both sides. You were playing on this big basketball floor and I could fantasize about what it was going to be like as I got better and better and would I ever get to play on, on a, uh, have this opportunity again, I didn't know.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the court the National Senior Women's Basketball Team. Thank you. 